To God be the glory, eh? God created us to worship him and to know him and be known by him. So we are thankful that uh, God had mercy on us and called us by name. And we are here today because God loves us. You are not a mistake. You are not a hiccup. You didn't fall down in a hole and one day you woke up to be a Christian. You've been chosen and selected before the foundation of the earth. God knows everything about you, where you're coming from and where you're going to. But before I go anywhere, I want to thank Pastor Josh. Thank you for having us here at your house. Brother Alex, thank you for fulfilling the call of God. And thank you for listening to a terrorist. <laughs> Here's the thing. When Ishmael comes to the table, because he's called to the table, God called the Jews, the Gentiles, and the seed. He called them all for such time as this. When they come to the table, they bring their inheritance with them. What is that inheritance? They bring the new part that the church has missed. They complete each other. It's called marriage. So, but I want to talk about is I want to describe to you where the church is today. So one day this man, he was going up, you know, hiking, and he slid a little bit, and he fell down, and he grabbed into the tree that's hanging off the cliff, and he started crying out, Lord, Lord, save me, save me, help me. And he heard the voice. He said, let go, let go. He said, if there's any other God over there so I can talk to. <laughs> America is in a place, if they are not getting what they want to hear, they are calling for other things to come about. We're in a place, we are, really we have no idea what's happening in our world. This morning when I spoke to a group of men, what the Lord showed me is one day God encountered this woman here. Her name is Hagar. And he said to her, he said, Hagar, where are you coming from and where are you going to? So my word to you is where are you coming from and where are you going to? If this does not change you today and when God changes your heart and your world, where are you going to go with this? Because this is not a circus in town and we are coming here to be just the new magicians or whatever. We are, I've been ordained for over 26 years to come and deliver this message to you today. The Word of God says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You have came to honor God, and I pray that God honor you today as you came and took your time to be with him. Where are we going today? You know, we are in a perilous time. In 2 Timothy and 3, Paul was in jail, and he was telling Timothy, he said, this is a perilous time. And he told him about the sign of time. And he told him exactly where we are in time. Today, we are in that same time, in the same day, in the same move. And America has still have no idea where they're coming from and where they're going to. We're in a place where Paul said to Timothy, he said, you're in a combat zone. What happened? Nero was burning Rome and he's blaming it on the Christians. You are the troublemakers. So what do we need to understand? When Paul talked to Timothy, he said, just like Jesus said, he said, see that you are not deceived. He said, it will be a delusional time that people will be delusionally insane, moving in a different direction. They have no idea where to go. We're in a place we are trying to figure out what's happening. So what is that delusional spirit? Is the fake stuff that we hear about on TV. TV brings to us a lot of fake stuff. And Christians today, they are feeding before TV, on the media, before they feed on the Word of God that God declared to us way in the beginning of time, the Bible, the Word of Truth. In the time that we are in today, men or women are confused about their identity. They don't know whether to be a man or woman. They have no ideas whether to kill their baby or to keep them. And they are worshiping and believing political gods and spirit. That's the spirit that moved in the beginning of time. When Satan fell out of the, the, uh, the, the throne of God, when God spoke to him in, in Isaiah 13, this is the beginning of the moving, uh, the, the, the political spirit that fell out of the throne of God. This one now, it's roaming the earth. And it's among us, and we are delusionally, we're not sure who is speaking the truth, but we're listening to other people before we're listening to the Bible. 
hate crime. If you, if you are a Christian, you are operating in a hate crime. And if you're, you know, people are, they have addictions and they have no remorse. And they are, you know, if they are punished if they stand for the truth. Good is bad and bad is good and our world is upside down. Does that describe where we are in time? We have a president before this president and a president before him and a pope of Rome. They stood and they said, we worship the same God. Muslim Jews and Christians worship the same God. Well, but we need to know the truth because the truth will set us free. The Quran in Surah, write this one down. In Surah number 109 and 2. And if you don't know how to go there, Google that. God, the Allah, the God of Islam, says, I do not worship what you worship, and you do not worship what I worship. I will never worship what you worship, and you will never worship what I worship. You to your religion and belief, and you and me to my religion and to my belief. Allah was speaking to the Jews and the Christians, telling them that we are not the same God, that we are not the same people. So now when they tell you we are worshiping the same thing, it's a fake spirit. It's delusional spirit. We're in a place we have no idea what's up and what's down. And the only thing that's going to take us through this is the light of the living God in these dark days. And read the book of Isaiah. He said, when the darkness filled the earth, Isaiah 60, when deep darkness filled the earth, he said, then my glory will come upon you. Are you waiting for God's glory? I am waiting for his glory because this is what we're going to celebrate and we're going to do, we're going to have a party. <laughs> Sorry, I'm from Southern Beirut, so I have a little Southern accent. So, <laughs> y'all, so America has been infiltrated by jihadis. How do I know that? I came to America for this infiltration. I came to be a stealth jihadist. What is stealth jihadist? Is not the one who carries a gun, but the one who wears a suit. And how do you do this? You infiltrate the culture by giving them disinformation, fake information. You throw the culture off. When everybody say, Muslim are doing this, you say, no, these are the bad Muslims. These are not the good Muslims because many good Muslims don't believe this. So they allow us to infiltrate deeper. This is what I came to do. Mine was the universities, colleges, uh, students, education system, uh, jail system, government system, and a poor neighborhood and a jail. This is where we want to change your culture from within. Today, these people are called the Muslim Brotherhood. I was recruited in a mosque. A mosque is a place to represent, it's an embassy to represent an Islamic state. Sorry, I'm a little bit too nervous. I don't know why. Chill, come all. I'm talking to myself. Don't get between me and me. You're having too much fun. <laughs> so therefore, what happened is, these group called the Muslim Brotherhood, the naming convention is Council American Islamic Relation, ISNA, Islamic Society of North America, Muslim Student Association, Muslim Student Union, and many, many others. These people have infiltrated, they are infiltrating all the way from the White House, all the way to your city councils, to your school boards, to your mayor, to every level of society. They are not here to establish harmony with America. They are here to establish what's so-called Ummah. Ummah is one world order under Allah. What is that? That is part of Sharia. We need to understand that this is strategized, started 7th century belief, and now it's being fulfilled in the United States of America. Why America? America is the final frontier. Most missions come from here. Most military comes from here. And America today is scrutinized by the majority of the, 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 the Islamic world. So I want to talk about something very specific. This war takes place on a local neighborhood, on a local level. We need to fight it in a local level. If you are not running for an office today, I ask you to run for an office. Because if God is on your side, God will guide you and lead you. If you are not sitting on a board, city council or school board, you need to consider that. 
Because the enemy are targeting this, and we need to start stepping in our rightful, you know, rightful way in God to change, to cause change. Jesus said, it's your Jerusalem, your Judea and Samaria, and the whole world. Is President Trump making the right decision to turn Syria to Turkey? Let's, let's, let's see what happened. Because what you don't know, because we're looking at it from American perspective, from media perspective, from socialist perspective, from Islamist perspective, and we're stepping out of this. But when you look at it from the other perspective, that's exactly what they wanted to do. So who is the president of Turkey? Erdogan Tayyip. Turkish President Erdogan is setting himself to be the next Khalif or the Caliph, the global Islamic movement, to lead the global Islamic movement. What does, what does Caliph mean? Caliph means is the person who take what, where Muhammad left to bring about, to represent, unite the Muslim nation and bring about Islamic hegemony and establish Sharia law all over the world and establish Islamic movement. And if you are not with Islam, that Islam will be at war with you. And if you are with Islam, you have to subjugate yourself to Islam. This is what he's going after. So with this, what happened? The Great Commission of Islam, Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, said something. He said, Inni umartu an uqatil al -shu'ub. There you have it. <laughs> he said, <laughs> sorry. He said, I have been commended by Allah to war against all people until everyone come to say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad his prophet. And he said, if they do not concede to you, then you have the right to their women, to their homes, to their children, to their finances, to their land, to their government, everything they own, it is your inheritance. Islam, when it was peaceful in Mecca, Muhammad, in 14 years, he had 100 followers, but when he went to Medina and he became a warlord and he moved from a religious system to the political system, Islam is today, the majority of it is a political system, over 80%. What happened is he was recruiting people every day, every month, six to 10,000 people were joining Muslims. Why? Because Allah, the God of Islam, said in the Quran, He said, whatever your right hand possess, it is yours to have. It is your right to have. This is in the Quran. And so therefore, Allah said, everybody is slave to somebody, so it's a system of slavery. So we have the right to enslave other people. Islam is a religion of slavery. While all other beliefs don't believe in slavery, Islam believes in slavery. What I'm telling you today, you may look at me and say, Kamal, you have two heads. You are confused. I'm here to tell you. You're dealing here with 7th century agenda. It's being fulfilled. It took them this long. My predecessors came to invade the United States of America in 1960. And they handed it to others. And others, it was handed to me in 1980. We did not work overnight. 9-11 was not it. The biggest mistake the terrorists did is the, to do 9-11. Why? Because it exposed who we are. When I was on the other side, I became Christian ever since. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> did I do it right? <laughs> so, 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 so the entire Islamic Middle, Middle Eastern world understand this. The American Muslim do not understand this unless they are attending a radical mosque. Erdogan is assessing his enemy today in the West, and he's making alliance with Iran and Russia to lead the Islamic State to new level. And so where is that putting us in? In Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 39, and Psalms 83. It's coming all together. Because he could not declare himself to be the Khalif, the rulers who leads all the Muslims, unless he go to the great mosque in Damascus. And when he seat himself over there, he will declare himself the final Khalif before he destroy Damascus. According to the word of God, it will be utterly destroyed. That's in your Bible. And so therefore what happened is, he is doing this so nobody comes after him and say, I'm the Khalif. 
And this is where the Antichrist will come according to the teaching of Islam. He will come on a white horse with double-edged sword. He will be dressed in white clothing, and he will break the cross, and he will butcher the pig, meaning he will declare war on the Jews and the Christians. This is in our teaching. <laughs> Americans have no idea what Islam is. 9-11 happened, and what did America do? They hit the snooze button and went back to sleep. We are snoring, y'all. All y'all. So therefore, is history repeating itself? Who is the current Khalif? Is it, has, has, it been, has it started? Is it taking place? There are 57 Islamic states in the United Nations. They are called the OIC. That's a reverse C. OIC. What happened is Organization Islamic Conference. What they do, they are controlling the United Nations, which way the United Nations to go. And who is controlling this? Erdogan Tayyip, the president of Turkey, who we just allowed to invade Syria and kill the Kurds and go all the way to Damascus. You are sitting in a place where it's the best of time and the worst of time. You are seeing the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. All of it is happening before you. How do you participate in this? It's your call. We need to come out of our suits, out of our comfort zone, and we need to start praying because this is a call to action. Amen? Amen. Some of you believe that. So did this happen? We, we look at history in the 16, 15th and 16th century. We find that the Christian became dim. People were happy campers. They were celebrating, they're going on vacation, and there's nothing wrong with vacation, but not, don't stay there. You know, come back. And what happened is the Ottoman Empire saw what's happening, and the Ottoman Empire seized that time and dominated for over 600 years. And in process, what happened is they took over the seven churches that Jesus talked about in the book of Revelations. That was in the Western Turkey. They came from the east and they took the western civilization. And so what happened, they took southeast Europe, the gate of Vienna, Hung Hungary today, the, not Hungary, Hungary, the country, the present day, the Balkan region, Greece, Ukraine, Middle East, Iraq, Syria, Israel, Egypt, North Africa, Algeria, Arabian Peninsula. And today they still control the most important place in mankind, uh, in man time. And that is called the Dardanelle ch Channel, or it's called the Miramar Sea. What is that? That's what control, what connect the Mediterranean Sea with the Black Sea. This is where the fleet, American fleet, to spy on Russia and East Europe, they have to go through the Dardanelle Channel. This is where the Russians have to go to, to, to the Middle East, and whatsoever, they have to go through the Dardanelle Channel. Now the Chinese are coming through this. Turkey is controlling all these people. In Islam, once you conquer a civilization, this civilization belongs to you. So therefore, if Spain was under Islamic conquering, then it belonged to Islam. So they have to take it back. If, 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 uh, if China was under Islam, then they have to take it back. If Russia was, they have to take it back. If France was, they have to take it back. All of it, we are in a time the Muslim want to repossess their land. And the Khalif, who is sitting on those 57 Islamic states, they are moving and changing our world. Today, what happened is American Navy could not go anywhere without Russia, without Turkey telling them how to go, where to go, when to go, and how to do it. The same with Russian and everybody else. Nine eleven. Nine eleven is nothing. What happened, that was a wake-up call. What's coming next, we're going to see the world is changing. Christianity will be held to its truth. Those, just like in the book of Timothy, what happened, those that are weak, they will jump ship and join the world. And those who are strong will stand and fight the good fight. This is time not to run away. This is time to fight. The Muslim Brotherhood today, the answer to Erdogan, Recap Tayyip, the president of Turkey. And just recently, these people 
they are in the United States of America. They don't wear fatigue like jihadis. They wear suits and they come to the White House dressed in the suits. Under President Obama, what happened, they were able to infiltrate and concrete themselves as a deep state in the United States of America. Over, there are over 3,000 operatives in the American government today speaking to the Middle East and speaking to other nations about what's happening in the United States of America, and they were put in the previous administration. Under the deep state, what happened under the FBI when Robert Mueller was the head of the FBI, Council of American Islamic Relation and Islamic Society of North America removed over 100 curriculum and changed them and turned them against America. Today, the agent in the FBI are trained by the Muslim Brotherhood. They are no longer trained by people like General Jerry Boykin. The government in the NSA, CIA, and Homeland, and, and all those policy immigration, they have been changed. Now the Muslims don't have to come and swore to protect this nation. They can swear to their God because Obama changed this. So you can swear to your own God, and you can swear not to protect this country. That has been changed. The oath has been changed. All this is taking place. If the American people start talking about uh, Islamic terrorism, they are called Islamophobe immediately. You are painted with shame. They are shutting the mouth of the American people by shaming them. And American people are running away because they have no idea how to fight this agenda, and they have no idea how to stand against all this. So because the Word of God says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge, not because they don't have knowledge, but because they refuse knowledge. We are willing to study everything and sit and, and shop and do everything. I mean, we know everything about Amazon, QVC, everything else. I, I hear the women saying amen. And so, therefore, what happened is we know about all this, but we don't know anything about what we face in the giants that they are marching in our land. Under our pre the previous administration, the Muslim bro Brotherhood sit training now many different places. Our chaplaincy, our military, you could not be a chaplain in the American military forces unless the Muslim Brotherhood said You're, you pass. Otherwise, you could not be a chaplain. The Muslim are given the green light for who will be and who will not be. So under, under the education system, billions of dollars coming from Saudi Arabia and coming from Islamic nation to open Islamic center in the universities in America. And now they're opening Islamic centers and they are changing our student to new level. When we see the street are filled with intifa, these people are being trained by Islamic center and other places on our colleges and universities. This is in a nutshell. Our books today are written by the Muslim Brotherhood, Islamic organization on the writing of our education for our children. Our children are forced to study Islamic history, which is not true. It is a deceptive history. In the Quran, Allah says, wa makaru wa makaru Allah, wallahu khayrul makirin. Meaning, Allah has deceived. And the Jews and the Christians have deceived, but Allah said, I am the greatest deceiver. He called himself the greatest deceiver. So today, the education is being changed and telling these people, Islam is just like Christian, Christianity and Judaism. Our constitution and your constitution is the same thing. Our children have no clue, and our family are not being engaged to tell these children what to do. The jail system today, they are the highest number of people being converted to Islam is in the jail system because the imams are flooding our jail system. The religious system, now there is movement called Chrislam. Many churches are bringing the Muslim to worship. When a Muslim come and worship at church on Friday, this church belongs to the Muslim. It's no longer belong to the church because the Muslim have declared Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Our media, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, PBS, all of them, MSNBC, Fox News, Twitter, Forbes, and many others, they've been bought by Saudi dollars. They're controlled. Media is controlled by Islamic movement and socialist movement and communist movement. Why am I telling you about this? Because we need to know what we're facing. 
You say, come on, don't wake me up. One day I have to stand before a God that he said, whom shall I send? I said, here I am, Lord, send me. And now I'm going over there. I'm going, don't stone me yet. Let me finish and then you can stone me. Because I have to tell you what I came to do and who are these people. And if I don't wake up the greatest nation on earth, if I don't wake up the bride of Christ, if I don't tell you how much God loves you, and if I don't tell you that the whole world is waiting on your freedom, if I don't tell you the whole world is full of prejudice and the church is going to come against this prejudice and change the whole world from the pulpit, this is who you are. And if you don't know your identity, you are going to lose it. One day I was in an airplane and the airplane was falling in a huge gap, air gap, and it was the whole airplane luggage everything was flowing all over the place and people were screaming and the captain came on the loud you know on the sound you know uh, on the speakers and he said calm down people calm down the character of this airplane is solid this troubled time if we have the character of Jesus Christ we can soar through this and we can change all things this is a time to look at the character that God given us. In him we live and move and have our being. So how does the Muslim destroy America? America could not be destroyed by guns, by bombs, or by media. But when they implement Sharia, the Islamic constitution, then America will fall apart. Sharia will change the future of the United States of America. Look at Great Britain. When they allowed Sharia, Great Britain is falling apart. The Muslims are creating state within states. Now you could not enter because we are Sharia state. In New York, we have Sharia police. They start establishing no-go zone area. In North Carolina, there is... A, a, South Carolina, there's an area over, with, over there, it's called Islamabad. There are just, all these are happening in the United States being established. So how did the Muslim, inf, uh, you know, infiltrated the White House today? And how did they get him to do what he needs to do, you know, uh, Trump to allow Erdogan Tayyip to invade Syria? Trump official welcomed the Muslim Brotherhood leaders to the White House on September 25th, just recently, the Department of Homeland Security Administration official hosted the event in the White House entitled Faith-Based Safety and Security Symposium. These same people, Osama Jamal, he is one of the leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood. He met with Pence and he met with many other leaders and he talked to them about something specific and unique. Jamal is the Secretary, Gen Secretary General of U.S. Council of Muslim Organization. And a few days ago, he met, a uh, few days before that, he met with uh, the President of Turkey in New York. President of Turkey met with him and other Muslim leaders. And these people went and they met with President Pence and Trump, oh, Vice President uh, Pence and President Trump. So what happened? They made this deal. Now it's being declared. So they have, they were able to do something that we were not, we didn't think that this will happen. So where are we going with all this? Should we hate the Muslim? Should we fight against the Muslim? May it never be. God is doing something special. God is having special on Muslims. And God is leading the Muslim to come to, 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 to Christ in the last days, according to his word in the book of Jewel. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. The young man and old man will have dreams and vision, but also I will pour it out on whom? On your maidservants. Who is the maidservant to Abraham? Hagar. God is pouring out his spirit in the last days on the Muslim. Every hour of every day, 664 Muslims come into Christ. 16,000 Muslims come into Christ daily. Six million every year. Why? Because God is separating the wheat from the chaff. And what happened? 
When these people are coming to Christ, they're becoming radical for, for God. Because we've been lied to, we've been stolen from, we've been raped, we've been used and abused. But now we came to our senses. And today I stand before you to tell you, we need to reach out to these people and tell them about your Jesus. About who Jesus is to you. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. How many people are you testifying to? Muslims are waiting still in the desert, waiting for somebody to invite them in. And when we invite them in, they're going to be your brilliant next to you, fighting for Jesus Christ. He's appearing to the Muslims in dreams and visions. And he's changing their world. You know, when I was a Muslim, my problem was, is the Christians are a bunch of stuck up, bunch of white people. Stop laughing. Why? Because I thought they want to keep their Christianity to themselves, and they think their God is bigger and better and the newest model, and we go like, we're going to change your world. But when we reach out to the, to the Muslims and befriend them and tell them about the living God and not hide from them and share with them the truth, and when you start praying for them and they start seeing the miracles, they will tell you, give me Jesus. Let me finish with this story. I went to Lebanon in 19, uh, 1991, last time I went over there. And I have a big family at that time. I had my immediate family were 57 people. Now they're over 300. And Yeah, they don't waste time. And it's, it's, well, it's in the Bible. God said they will do that. And <laughs> you're troublemaking. You're getting me in trouble. So therefore, what happened is... So, so, so what happened is my youngest sister came to me and she said, my brother, I want to talk to you. She took me to the other room and she said, you are one of us, but you are not one of us. Who are you? Who are you? You know, the worst thing I could do, I can tell my family, <laughs> I'm a Christian. And guess what? It's one way ticket to the moon. They're going to take me out. I'm not going to tell them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be a slick and not tell them the truth and hide the truth from them. So what I did, I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you tell me why you're asking me this? She said, since you've been here, we've been dealing with poverty, sickness, disease, infirmities, and we're divided. We, we have not been had this time, but you came in and you brought this with you. All of a sudden, we are friends. We are laughing. We're breaking bread together. We have contracts left and right. Oh, we are, we, we are healed. We're not feeling the sickness anymore. She said, you brought this with you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The footstep of the righteous, the order of God. Your fervent, effectual prayer are mighty in God. So therefore, what happened is, she said, you brought this with you. She said, is your God, is his name Allah. And I came to lie to her. Why? Because if I stay alive, I can save more people for Christ. And I heard word for word, the word came to my understanding. He said, if you are ashamed of me, my son, I will be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Do you know when you hear God speaking to you and it's coming to your inner man, you've been served. I looked at her, I said, my sister, his name is Jesus. She said, I know it, I know it, give me Jesus. They are so waiting, they want to have what you have, because you have more than enough, and they don't have it. They've been sitting out there in jealousy. You sit, you sit on the table of the kings, and they sit on the poverty table, still waiting for the food that falls out of your table. That day I prayed to her in the name of Jesus. And when I said amen, she screamed with a loud voice. Ah! She said, shut up. <laughs> They're going to kill us. <laughs> and she said, I don't care. I don't care. She screamed and screamed. I said, shut up, please. They're going to kill us. Tell, us what Tell me what happened. She said, I was a little girl playing. And this hand came over my head and oppressed me. I go to sleep. I wake up. I go to eat with severe, severe headache. And I was born with a defect 
My intestine comes out of my belly button. I'm unclean according to law, Islamic law, so nobody would marry me. But when you said in the name of Jesus, my stomach was healed and the headache was lifted up for the first time in my life. When I heard this, how horrible would that be if I passed and lied to her about this and her eternity today is set for the rest of her life and I could have lied and cheated her out of that eternity. I start screaming with a loud voice, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. She said, shut up, shut up, they're going to kill us. <laughs> I want to give gift for those who are here. And uh, I want to do this very fast before Alex uh, say you're out of time. This is my best work yet with General Jerry Boykin. It's called Unveiling the Ugly Truth. That's how Islam infiltrated America. This is six hours, six DVDs of teaching how they infiltrated our culture. And Pastor, can you pass it to somebody, please? And this is here is how we minister to the Muslims and how to reach the Muslims and how to preach to the Muslim and how do we take our nation back. Six DVDs. That's 12 in all. This, these are the best yet. This is here, 10 amazing Muslim stories, how Muslims are having an encounter with Jesus Christ and how God is changing the world of Islam. And I just want to let you know that uh, it's, it's happening. Uh, with this, I already took more than my, enough of time, so I better sign out. In the meantime, God bless you and God bless the United States of America.